Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Beta FPV Toothpick F4 Flight Controller ESC All-in-One. Now we just took a look at the full speed RC version of this board and something I should note and step back is that Bob shared a story apparently on his Facebook group about how he was helping both companies design uh, these boards but he didn't get everything he wants. So that's something that's important to note that if you find that there's something that you would have changed then, you know, Bob didn't get what he wanted or kebab as he's more known online. Uh, but on this particular board, we see right there in the top right, layout by kebab FPV. So they went ahead and printed it right on the silk screen. That's pretty cool. They also used his toothpick nomenclature uh, on the left side of the board, toothpick version. So let's stick to this side of the board. And just like last time, I'm going to use my TS-80 as a pointer uh, to point out all the little things. And the first thing I should do is just put the pointer up here. Hopefully I can get everything to focus nicely so that you can get an idea about these solder pads. These are, of course, the solder pads. These are the pin connectors. And in this little baggie that I have in the background, we do have the connectors, just like we did with the other board. Sorry, that's out of focus. We've got some nylon screws, some nuts, and some gummies. And I prefer these gummies because I don't like cutting down, if I have to, the longer gummies. So I like that the fact that they have this. And something that you probably already noted on this board is that they have breakout holes here on the side. So you can grab these with your needle nose pliers or what have you and snap these off so that you don't have to push the gummies through. You can you know, take these off and just slide them in for a particular install reason. Uh, so that's a nice feature. And then up here we've got, of course, got a boot button, which we can need from time to time for flashing a new version of Betaflight. So unlike the previous board that we took a look at, when they have these connectors numbered, they just put a number. They don't put the Mo M or M M anything else. It's just the number of the motor. So you would want motor one to go here, motor two, three, and four. And uh, so I think that these holes in the pad should help us with any sort of tugging on the wires once they're soldered on. And hopefully that makes the pads more resistant to uh, lifting as well. But time will tell on that sort of thing as we get more of these in the wild and we get them used. Something else that's a little bit different, we've got an F port on this one, which I don't believe we had on the last one. Of course, we've got TX2 up here, RX2. We've got ground 5 volt S plus and for our spectrum satellite or DSMX friends we've got 3.3 volt right down here. We can attach our LED right here board it says LED. This board is so nice it's so easy to read and the silk screening is so good. And then we've got our 5 volt, our ground, our battery plus and minus. So that isn't shared. Uh, the, the battery plus isn't shared like it is on the other board so that's another benefit. I've rotated the board again and then we've got the TX1 right here. We've got ground 5 volt, we've got video out, video in. 5 volt and ground. Let's take a look at the other side here. So you can take a look at all the different little pieces that make up this board. Get my camera to focus a little bit better. Also note that this has through holes for our battery lead but they didn't use them and this did come pre-soldered and we have a capacitor under here. This looks to be 18 gauge wire. You might be able to see right there and by my finger here it says 8 so I presume that the size is an 18 gauge because it's definitely not 28 gauge. But I would have preferred, as I'm told, that it is probably better to fill these holes with solder to help make them stay put. If something did get, uh, if you did have a battery ejection and this wire was tugged on, I like to secure this down to the frame, anyways. Uh, so if you get one of these boards and you feel strongly about that, you want to might you might want to add a little bit of solder right here just to make sure that the uh, battery lead doesn't come off of those pads. So one of the things that I failed to mention in the last video when I was covering a, a flight controller is I really like how everything's on top because I've found in previous iterations, and you probably have too, is that some of the pads were on the bottom side and some were on the top, and so you may have to loop around the board. This will really clean up our wiring, at least in my opinion, and the installations I will probably use these boards in. And so having all these pads on top is really nice. I think that'll make it easier because you'll be able to put your board down, you'll be able to solder up all your motors, and then you'll be able to attach all your other components that need to be attached to the board. You won't have to pre-wire any of your leads before you put the board down on your frame, which is kind of, in my opinion, a, a traditional way of building. You put the board down, and then you start with the motors, and you work up from there. So we're, we're micro-sizing our flight controller ESCs, and we're getting back to traditional build techniques. Again, that's traditional as in the sense of my opinion. 
Some of the particulars about this board, the uh, beta flight target is the Matek F411. Uh, it supports 2 to 4S, 12 amp ESC, has the MPU 6000 on it, the built-in current sensor, and the reported weight with pins not pre-soldered is 6.2 grams. Let's go ahead and throw it on my scale and see what it says. So the reported weight must be without the pigtail or the battery lead on there because I'm getting over 9.5 grams. Also, I failed to mention that the peak current on the ESC is 15 amps. And again, peak does not tell us how long that is, whether that's 1 second, 2 seconds, or 10 seconds uh, I can't say at this moment I don't think there's really a need to put the pin out on the screen I think you can see everything pretty clearly and as I rotated it how hopefully that was easy enough for everyone to see right now on the beta FPV website it looks like they're selling this board for $44.99 that is US dollars of course uh, they have two that you can select from you can get the pins not pre-soldered and the pins pre-soldered so you get to choose whether or not you want the connectors or the pins already on the ESC pads and uh, you'll probably also find this on Kebab's website and I'll link that down below. Uh, currently Beta FPV is showing this item as temporarily out of stock and they have stock that's coming on the 12th of September. That could be because they've got these at RDQ and they've got them at Bob's Warehouse and Pyrodrone. They could have sent a bunch out for resale. I haven't checked those websites just yet. I do believe I thought I saw the, the image of this board on several of our US vendors. That should cover it. Just a quick peek, a little awareness video about this board. If you're out there building, you know, pick one up. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.